Sock passe to all the team, keep it clean, that's Haitian out there. The reason we start the video off like that is because bringing Jason Pierre-Paul in for a visit was so nice that the Ravens decided they were going to do it twice. And you got to figure, like, the deal is going to get done today. Uh, Ravens have a need, a glaring need, a need that they've had even before the season started, but they didn't properly address the need. So it's a need. And Jason Pierre-Paul is a free agent. They brought him in earlier for a visit a couple of months ago, and he was like, oh, man, the vibes here is nice. I like it. He's from Florida. He's from Deerfield Beach, so it just makes sense. Another Florida Raven. Come on now. Like, hey. But anyway, the Ravens brought in Jason Pierre-Paul uh, for a visit. The, again, I believe two-time Super Bowl champ, one with the Giants and once with the Bucks, because – I'm pretty sure he was on that Bucks team a couple years ago. But anyway, if he was cool, if he wasn't cool, we talked about, we've been talking about Jason Pierre Paul uh, in a couple of videos recently because it just makes sense. It, it just makes sense. It, it's like, like it, why not? And again, even if he's not the Jason Pierre Paul that he once was, even if he's not the Jason Pierre Paul of old, even if he's not Jason Pierre Paul in his youth. It cannot be any worse than what's been going on recently. Well, especially in that last game. You bring in somebody that has experience. You bring in somebody that has knowledge. You bring in somebody that's had success throughout their career as a pass rusher. Why not? Why not? And now, you know what's something that's funny about the Ravens? Ravens are a team, especially at the pass rush position. They are a team that if they like you, they'll give you a shot. They'll try to give you a shot. And if you turn them down, if things don't work out, for whatever reason, whether it's on you, whether it's on them, whether the timing was just off, if they really like you like that, they'll circle right back around again. Reason I say that is because you look at Zadarius Smith. It was Zadarius Smith. Um, Ravens drafted him. And what was he, a fifth-round draft pick? Whatever he got drafted, the Ravens drafted him. He's with the Ravens for a couple of years. Over the first couple of years, didn't really get that much playing time, but he looked solid. Uh, then his final season, he got a lot of playing time. It was money time. He stepped up. Raven stepped up, uh, giving him a chance, and boom. We knew he was going to cash in. He knew he was going to cash in. Uh, but the Ravens, they, they first took a chance on him with, with drafting him, uh, and it didn't quite work out so well. Uh, they, they weren't able to get him a second contract. I don't even know if they really offered him one because I think they just figured, you know what, we'll go in a different direction. He's going to cost too much money. Okay. So what happened this offseason? Ravens were like, man, we need a pass rusher. Man, Zadarius Smith, we know, you know he can still get that job done. Let's give it another shot. So that was one example. Yannick Ngakwe. Boy, he was a beast with them Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, of course, him and Calais Campbell, they were wreaking havoc on quarterbacks all the time. Then all of a sudden, Yannick Ngakwe wasn't feeling the Jaguars no more, wasn't feeling ownership, wasn't feeling none of that. Said, I want out of Jacksonville. Get me up out of here. I, I, I'm trying to get going on, on, on this team. I don't want to be here anymore. Ravens tried. They tried to get him. They tried to snag him. They tried to trade for him, but it just it didn't work itself out. Didn't work out. But then the Ravens were like, wait. Because the Vikings, the Vikings ended up trading for Yannick Ngakwe. So Yannick Ngakwe went to the Minnesota, and there it just, ah, it just wasn't what Minnesota Vikings thought it was going to be. So the Ravens were like, wait a minute. We like this guy. We really do. And we liked him before, but for some reason it just didn't work out. Let's try again. They tried again, and boom. Ravens were successful. And if we need to go to somebody who's even more recent... Let's go to one of Ravens, their, their top pass rusher right now. I remember some years, years ago, Ravens, again, they, they were struggling at, at pass rush. I mean, they, yeah, they've been struggling at pass rush for a while. So anyway, but that's another conversation. But Ravens were struggling at pass rush. Offseason came around. Ooh, this guy, Justin Houston, is a free agent. Wow. Boy, would he look good in the purple and black. Ravens, they brought him in for a visit. Ravens were interested in him. Ravens wanted Justin Houston. But he signed with the Colts. He signed with Indianapolis. And it was like, doggone it. Missed out. Mm, mm, mm. 
Then Justin Houston became a free agent a couple years later. And guess what happened? You get me? So my point is, especially at the pass rush position, Raven, if they really like you and they circle back around twice on you, it, yeah, the, it's just a matter of time before the deal gets done. I, I feel like there's no way that probably today we'll get an announcement, oh, Jason Pierre-Paul signed with the Baltimore Ravens. Because it, it, it just makes too much sense. It, it makes too much sense. Uh, it, it, why not bring in the, the Haitian sensation, JPP, to, to help? Because we clearly need all the help that we can get at the pass rush position. At pass rush, at edge, outside linebacker, whatever, defensive end, whatever you want to call it. Because, you know, that pass rush, they got so many different names. And there's so many different ways you could address them. But, again, why not? Why not? Now, um, should it stop there, though? That's where it gets a little tricky. Because the expectation for me, I, I would think that Bowser would be back after week four. Because uh, right now, Bowser's on the pup list, so he has to miss the first four weeks. Um, so you would think come week five that Bowser, he'll be back. And he'll be healthy. Like I, I thought he was going to be ready week one. Not even based off of how late his injury was last season, but just because of how he looked when he was walking around. He was practicing. His, well, not practicing, but how he looked when he was walking around and whatnot. And then, of course, he kept doing this thing every, every game. He, and he still does it where he throw the ball back and forth with, with the kids and stuff. And just because you throw the ball back and forth don't mean you're ready. But you didn't see him, the fact that he's out there doing that. If, if he was really that injured, would Ravens actually let him be out there doing that? No, they wouldn't if it was that bad. Because you never know. They could always be a little slip up. Somebody could be like, hey, Bowser, go long. And Bowser would be like, okay, I got it. And Ravens couldn't afford to take that risk. So that's why I say I, I just I think Bowser will be back. Uh, when it's after these for four weeks, come week five. Um, and with David Ajabo, no clue. No, no clue. No clue at all. Um, and we're still hoping that with Adafi away, that he can sort of just, again, keep, take that next jump. No, he was super raw coming out of college. Super raw. Super raw in college. Just very raw. Hadn't been playing football for very long. So now it's up to him to, to take that next step, to really put in the work, and it's up to coaching to really help him take that next step and really just help him get to that next level. They got to. Like, you got him for the next uh, three to four years. So it's important that you really invest the time, you really exhaust every single option you possibly can with making him a better player. And I know it's a lot of people that's been doubting Odafe away. I don't know. Again, it's, it's early. And I understand, like, yeah, he ain't been making the sacks and whatnot, and Justin Houston has. And it's, that's where it gets really tough. Because if, um, say, for instance, Justin Houston wasn't making the sacks and whatnot, if there was not the production from his end, then that would make it easier to sort of dismiss a dot fair way, so to speak. And be like, ah, oh, okay, he's a second-year player, da, da, da. But since Justin Houston has been producing, then people are like, oh, man, hey, where's the dot fair way? Why he not producing? And he's younger, he's faster, he's bigger, he's more athletic than Justin Houston. Why is he not producing? So, it is what it is, though. It's part of the game. It's football. It's a what have you done for me lately league. It's a production-based business. So, people want to see results. That's it. People want to see results. And I'm sure uh, the coaching staff, they want to see results as well. But bringing in Jason Pierre-Paul, it just makes sense for results. It makes sense. Um, and I, I do not see any reason why you will, you will let him leave. <laughs> like, there's no reason. There's absolutely no reason. Keep him, put him on, tell him, hey, go get Mac Jones, man. Just, and when you tell him that, be like, hey, imagine that Mac Jones is Tom Brady. Y'all know what y'all did. I know you remember. Just imagine that you got straight hand next to you. You got Justin Tuck next to you. I mean, close enough. We got Justin Tuck Kerr. But why not? And everybody always get them mixed up on Twitter and stuff. But anyway, just tell him that. Be like, hey, this could be your, your first game could be against the Patriots. And we know your history against those guys. Why not? Why not? So I'm sure you give him a little extra motivation and whatnot. But yeah, so Ravens, get the deal done. Yeah, just, 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 just get it done. There's no reason why this deal should not be done today. Today. I'm recording this at 1.48 p.m. September 20th. 1.48 p.m. 
I expect an announcement later on this evening. Hey, Ravens signed Jason Pierre-Paul because it just makes sense.